guys, it's Megan, and in today's video, I'll be showing you a few collection ideas to put in your 2020 bullet journal. And just in case you're not sure what collections are, basically they're just a list of related ideas. If you're not into bullet journaling, these ideas would work in a regular notebook as well. So with all that being said, let's just get into the video. I don't know about you guys, but it seems like I'm always wanting to rearrange my furniture about every six months. And I'm not really a, you know, measuring person. I just kind of move it and pray that it fits. So this page will be super useful the next time that I decide to redecorate. It does require measuring all of your furniture, which is kind of a struggle, but I promise you it's not that bad and you only have to do it once. You could do this for any room in your house, and I decided to do this for my bedroom because it desperately needs updated. So here's what my room currently looks like, and yeah, it is not cute. It's such a weird layout in here, and I've never been able to, like, make it look nice. We did this whiteboard wall beside the bed a few years ago. Um, it was definitely a choice. I'm not a fan of this, like, gap by the bed, and I think that I want to make, like, a daybed-style headboard to put here. And the back wall is just a mess. I honestly just don't know what to do with it. I kind of want to make one of those yarn tapestry things for above my bed, since the headboard won't be there anymore, and maybe, like, a shelf or something above it. And there's supposed to be a door there, but long story short, it's not. Um, my dad said that he'd make me one of those bookshelf doors, so that would be cool if he ever does that. And then we have my TV and my desk, which I don't really use that much. Since I cleaned out my craft room, I usually work in there. So I think I want to turn this into a little, like, vanity area. Beside that, we have my closet, which is a mess. You do not want to see what it looks like in there. And by the door, I have this cabinet that I collaged magazine pictures all over in like middle school, um, decided I didn't like that anymore, so I sanded it and scraped it all off, but I don't really know what to do on here. Like, I want to paint something on it, but I don't know what to paint, so if you have any suggestions, definitely let me know. Honestly, if you have suggestions for anywhere in the room or anything that I should do with it, definitely let me know. I will love you forever, because I just don't know what to do with it. Which, I did this page directly in pen because I was just lazy and didn't want to sketch it out. So the scale is way off, but here's how the finished page turned out. Let me know if you guys would want to see a room makeover series. I feel like that would be fun to do. The next idea that I have for you guys is to make a cheat sheet for an electronic like a camera. And yes, this means actually reading the instructions, which I don't think I ever did in the past like year or two that I've had this camera, and taking notes on the most important parts. I've always just used auto mode on my camera, and I never really, like, learned how to use it, which works fine, you know, that's how I've done it for ever since I've started my channel. But I wanted to see if using manual mode would help me to save time and help my videos look a little bit nicer. Um, it's definitely a learning process. This footage did not come out super great. I think what I'm gonna do from now on is to just keep it on video mode, which does everything automatically except for the exposure, because apparently... Shooting videos is a lot different than shooting photos, and I did not exactly realize that, so this is like a mess. Pretty much what I did wrong was I just set everything too high. The aperture, the shutter speed, the ISO, all of it was just too high, and so now if you speed up the clip, it looks like this, which is not exactly a good look. But I think that I figured it out, hopefully. I guess we'll see in the next video, but I did learn a lot and I know I'll be coming back to this page quite a bit. I can see this being really helpful if you need to learn a new editing program, like maybe Final Cut Pro, which, planning on getting that soon, I just haven't got there yet. But anyways, here's how the finished page turned out. And as you can see, I added this little bit about shutter speed at the bottom, just in case I ever decide to try doing it fully manually again. Since I cleaned out my craft room last year, I've noticed that there are some supplies that I'll reach for all the time, and others that I really haven't used for years. And I always have a hard time getting rid of things because I always think, you know, I might need that someday. But I thought that this page might be helpful to see what supplies that I actually use. Plus, I'll know what to look for the next time that I'm at a craft store. I know that I mentioned doing a video on my favorite craft supplies, but honestly, I started filming that video, I went to edit it, and I was like, wow, this is so boring. Literally no one wants to watch this. So real quick, the 10 craft supplies that I personally use the most are my hot glue gun slash hot glue sticks, Mod Podge, fabric glue, Elmer's glue sticks, duct tape, washi tape, a utility knife, an X-Acto knife, cheap acrylic paint, and scrapbook paper. 
I also use a ton of recycled materials like cardboard, cardboard tubes, old clothes, magazines, and recycled jars. I kept this page really simple, I just made a column to write down the supply, and then a column to write whether I restocked it or not. And if you're not super into crafts, you could make a similar list for something like makeup or office supplies. And sort of going along with that theme, another collection that I made for my bullet journal was this ways to use various supplies page. If you have anything that you'd like to get more use out of, this page is a great way to start. I divided my page into four sections, and I put a different craft supply in each section. On the top, I put my laminator and jelly plate, which are both fairly newer supplies that I got for Christmas. And on the bottom, I put perler beads and my Cricut machine, which are both things that I'd like to get more use out of. I have ideas for things like this saved on Pinterest, but having a physical reminder can help save you a little bit of time. Plus, it allows you to add your own ideas as well. I did a few quick drawings of each supply, but you obviously don't have to do that. And in case you are wondering, I colored everything in this video with my Crayola Super Tip markers because they don't bleed through the page. And if you want to see how I set up the rest of my bullet journal so far, just click the eye in the corner. So here's how the finished page turned out. I didn't fill in any of the ideas yet, so if you have any ideas on how to use these supplies, make sure to let me know in the comments. Another page you could include in your bullet journal is a list of skills that you want to learn. I have all of these things that I've always wanted to learn how to do, but I always just procrastinate and I never do them because I think that they'll take too long. Like I mentioned learning how to use my camera earlier in this video, I put that off for almost two years and it took me about two days to figure it out. For me, the hardest part about doing anything is just getting started. So having this list will be nice for those days when I want to do something productive, but I don't really have any good ideas. The skills that I put on my list are how to use Final Cut Pro, how to shoot in manual mode on my camera, how to properly use Procreate because I've used it. It's kind of difficult. I prefer Autodesk Sketchbook just because the interface is so much more simple, but I know that Procreate can do a lot more. And how to manage my time more effectively because I feel like things always just take me like way longer than they should. I always look up fonts to use for headings in my journal and I thought it might be nice to print some out so that I don't have to look on my phone every time. All I did was Google hand lettering fonts, picked out some of my favorites, and printed them out. I decided to put this spread on the back of my grid spacing cheat sheet. I keep this page in the front pocket so that I can pull it out and I don't have to keep flipping back and forth in my journal. I just wrote fonts at the top of the page and then glued down my favorites. This page is great for anyone who's new to hand lettering and might not be able to think of what fonts to use. And here's how the finished page turned out. It barely took any effort, but I know that I'll be referencing this a lot. Do you ever try to put together an outfit and then you think, you know, wow, this would look a lot better if I had a certain color shirt or a belt or something? Personally, my problem is that I have too many statement pieces, but not enough like basics if that makes sense. So I decided to make a close to buy page where I could just write down what I need to look for. I used to love shopping and like, buying clothes and stuff like that, but honestly, it's become one of my least favorite activities because nothing ever fits right and it's just a mess. Like, it's fine when you're in middle school and you know you don't have hips, but now, I, I can never find jeans. But anyways, here's how the finished page turned out. I'm sure I'll think of more things later, but all I could think of right now is solid color shirts, like either t-shirts or long sleeve, whichever and some more American Eagle leggings, cause I just got some leggings from there and they're actually like pretty nice. The last idea that I have for you guys is to draw out different stretches or yoga poses. I've said this before, but this is definitely something that I don't do enough and I really should so I'm not constantly getting injured. I just found a graphic on Pinterest and copied the poses and if you're into drawing, this is a really good way to practice anatomy. I obviously didn't make this too detailed, like she doesn't have a face, but you know, it's fine. This is one of the clips that I messed up when I was trying to figure out my camera, so sorry if it looks a little bit weird, but here's how the finished page turned out. I'm not sure how much I'll actually use this, but it was fun to draw and surprisingly easy. Something else that you could do that I've seen is like do a little challenge where you have the different pose and then you have to do it every day for a certain amount of time, like a month or something. That might help you stay motivated. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this one. My merch, my website, and all of my social media will be linked down below. 
And yeah, I love you guys so, so much. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.